and then you could turn on your video and mute. Okay, I think I'm on. Okay, I'm gonna hang up now. Thank you, bye-bye. Good to go. Good to go. Thank you. Right. Right. Well, welcome everyone. It's 301. I'm going to call the uh, meeting to order and uh, call the roll. I want to start with uh, Commissioner Barbara McKenzie. Can you hear me, Barbara? I can, and I'm here. Fantastic. <laughs> Great to I, I see you. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, Commissioner Dave Cahill. Here. Thanks. And Commission Chair Deborah Doyle. Here. All right. Um, there's no uh, announcements uh, in terms of public appearances. Lisa, do we have any any comments uh, from the public? There were no public comments submitted via email, and there are no members of the public in attendance. Okay. Well, in that case, I'm going to move right to discussion items. And the first item is uh, 4.1, Budget Accounting and Finance Services Workflow. Uh, looks like we have a little uh, schedule adjustment. Myrna, I'll turn it over to you. And let me just remind everyone, especially uh, since Barbara's joining us through Zoom, please be sure to uh, use your microphones and make sure they're green when you're talking. Thank you. Myrna, that's you. Can you put your mic on, please? Okay, thank you. Uh well, just as a reminder of where we are with uh, the workflow, and uh, we're we're you know meeting our our targets here in terms of um, deliverables, and uh, March was the um, third end of third quarter for the fiscal year, and so uh, we hope to bring a summary of the capital projects um, through the third quarter and if there are any uh, la uh, last final uh, requests for appropriations. Um, but other than that, uh, we we had the budget workshop on March 27th and the budget adoption is scheduled for uh, June 5th, the June 5th uh, commission meeting. Okay, so the only the only change really is we're pushing back the capital projects update a month. Yes. Okay. Um, I have no questions or concerns. Anybody from the committee with comment? Okay, uh, let's move on to item 4.2, financial reports for March. This is the end of third quarter. Um, I'm going to ask that we uh, follow this process uh, Myrna, I'd like you to please make your summary remarks. At that point, if you would please pause so we can take questions from the committee, and then we'll go through the reports uh, one at a time, uh, addressing any questions or comments. Is that okay? Yes. All right, thank you. Okay, so we've made it to the third quarter, the end of the third quarter uh, of this fiscal year, marked by March 31st, 2020. Four, this is 75% of the fiscal year has transpired. And revenues combined total are 25. Excuse me. Um, I'm sorry. Lisa, we're in the wrong place here. Um, okay. There we are. Ah, okay. That's, that's interesting. Yours is not the same as mine. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. I'm I'm sorry, Marina. Please go ahead. Um. So combined revenues are twenty five point five million dollars, or fifty seven percent of the budget. Uh, under property tax, um, the actuals to date are fourteen point nine million dollars, and this reflects fifty six point one percent of the approved adjusted budget. 
As you may recall, the commission approved uh, an increase in uh, property taxes given the certified values. And um, so we also know that part the we're still pending um, the uh, property tax payment that that people made on April 10th. Uh, under sales tax, the library sales tax as of the end of March were $9.2 million or 56% of the budget. And uh, because of the two month lag that we experienced with sales tax, the funds received in March represents seven months of, um, of sales tax or 58% of the fiscal year, seven, seven months. And the, so if you recall, um, I have been noting that, that there have been a, a little slight gap in terms of how, how much of the fiscal year has transpired uh, compared to the percentage of, of revenues that we received uh, for the year. And in February um, was six months of, of revenues and um, that slightly closed our gap that we were experiencing in January, which was 2.8% uh, and we closed it by to 1%. Um, but then we received uh, the March receipts and the gap grew a little bit to 2%. So um, the target is, is that March is seven months, which is 58% of the fiscal year, but we're, we've only collected 50% of, 56% of our um, expected revenue for the year. Um, Final sales tax receipts, though, are not received are not received until August twenty fourth because of that two month lag. And as previously stated, uh, sales tax revenues tend to have an upward trend for the months of February, which I've stated already, and May and June. Should um, sales tax still experience a two percent gap, as I just described, when we're in the month of June? then we might uh, experience a shortfall in this one revenue uh, line. Um, however, the upside is that other revenues are on track uh, to meet or exceed our revenue targets. And, uh, and so that would offset any shortfall in um, the sales tax receipts. Uh, furthermore, um, there is a projected savings under our expenditures that will also offset any shortfalls in sales tax revenues. So there would be no impact to services in this fiscal year. And um, so at this time, the revenue target to year end will remain the same as uh, 16 point, uh, $16 million, $16,458,287. And I will continue to monitor this closely and um, and give you you know updates as we as I normally do at our monthly finance committee meeting. Um, the other revenues, as I just uh, mentioned, uh, are at one point three million dollars or eighty five percent of our target. This is a combination of interest earned, other jurisdictions. Um, grants and donations and charges for damaged books. Um, under the expenditure side, total expenditures are $30,524,236, which is 62.8% of our budget. Salaries and benefits through end of March are 19, approximately $19 million or 66.7% of the total budgeted expenditures. And um, we do expect to be within our salaries and benefits budget uh, by June 30th, 2023. Cash balances as of end of March, property tax is $16,086,337. 86, 
sales tax 20 million 610 with $22. Restricted cash is a is um of all co the combination of all sources is 5,039,823 and of the restricted cash the bequest balance is 3,217,278. Uh, there's been interest in the David Charles Johnston endowment, and the balance there is $518,327. Under the fund balance, um, as you know, uh, the fund balance is modified when there is an adjustment to the budget. And in March, the commission did approve uh, a budget adjustments under revenues and expenditures under capital. So at this time, um, with those approvals, property tax um, fund balance that's uncommitted and available for, for budgeting is $11.9 million and under sales tax is $7.5 million. Because this is a quarterly report um, at a, on a quarterly basis, we also include the allocation of major revenues, which is according to the, the policy. Um, and can you scroll to that one, please, Lisa? The allocation of major revenues. Like the measure Y? Yes. So as you can see here, uh, for example, capital expenditures are uh, this, the sales tax covers 90% of those expenditures and property tax covers 10% um, and so on and so forth. I just would like to note that there will be by the year end, uh, there will be some adjustments to salaries and benefits. There are some benefits that are have not been fully allocated by division. Um, and so uh, will that's still pending. And so this out that allocation would percentages would change um, when that is completed. And also Sunday hours are also uh, paid for 100% by the sales tax. So um, uh, we're monitoring those as well. So I just wanted to share this with you. Um, there will be a Measure Y Oversight Committee meeting next week on Thursday. And I will pre, this is one of their primary focuses on discussions is on this allocation. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, and you have the detail of the property tax and sales tax uh, by general ledger account. Um, quarterly, you also receive um, year to date expenditures under other contract services. And you also received um, uh, the balances of each of the friends uh, groups. Thanks very much for the overview. Before we go on, yes, we're going to take questions and comments. Dave, I'll start with you. Yes, you noticed a drop off in the sales tax revenue. Is there any economic or other reason for that, considering that that figure tracks closely consumer activities? It is very closely related to consumer activities. Um, so when, when um, inflation was high and prices were increasing year after year, we also saw an increase year over year in our sales tax. Um, now that uh, inflation has leveled off significantly, uh, from you know seven percent in prior years to now hovering three percent, we the sales tax is also seeing that there's an, still an increase to sales tax revenue, but it not at the same rate. So that is what's tapering off. Okay, thanks, Barbara. Yes, thanks. Um, back uh, on the sales tax, I mean, we've all been a little bit concerned about this for the last number of months, so I, I appreciate your tracking this carefully. I, I would also think with interest rates being high, 
maybe people aren't buying cars and, you know, big things like that, you know, right now, could it be affecting the property tax? I just have one little, it's actually kind of a, not a serious question, but I under, noticed under restricted cash, check with Jessica. And I wondered oh. if we were supposed to do that or. No, that them. was, um, I'm sorry. That was a, a note to myself that, so I that uh, Jessica re does a reconciliation of the friends accounts and friends okay. accounts are under the restricted cash. So I was uh, making sure that she had completed that reconciliation and I forgot to remove my note to self. That so was I'm a sorry. guess, but that was about the friends. So yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Good work. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. good, good eye, Barbara. And thanks for asking that. I, uh, I, I had a note on that also. Other questions or concerns about the overview report that Myrna just, just provided. Um, I just had um, one question. I know we'll get into this in more detail as we look at the reports, but uh, both total expenditures and uh, expenditures for salaries and benefits are well below the roughly 75% we would expect them to be at if if they were straight line. Um, I, I know that salaries and benefits are a little bit higher in the second half of the year because they include the COLA adjustment that went in on January 1st, but not to the point where we're in any danger of exceeding the budget. What about the total expenditures generally? Are you feeling comfortable that we're going to come in Considerably, considerably below what we had budgeted for our total expenditures. We will be we will be within ninety to ninety five percent of our expenditures. Is my estimation. Um, I do think that there will be a slight increase in in uh, expenditures. Uh, you will see in your May uh, meeting that we're preparing reports and items for your approval that will have expenditures with those. And I hope that you'll be happy with that. Uh, just general improvements to our library, but um, yes, we will still, we will be within our budget with some slight, some, some savings in that area. Okay. That's, that's, that's great. Really glad to hear that. And uh, I know that the property tax payment scheduled for April 10th, have you gotten any preliminary indications from the county about? Uh, not the last time I checked. I did not see a posting yet. So okay. I will have to, I can get back to you and send you an email. Okay. On it. Normally, how long does it take them? About a week. Yeah. Okay. So close. Yeah. All right. Well, that, that's great. And any other questions on, on Myrna's summary? Okay. Well, let's, we're going to, walk through the reports and I, I'd like to do this on sort of a question and exception basis. So first report that we have is the summary. Um, there we go. Yeah. Had fair second. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Lisa. Um, any, any questions, comments, concerns? Yes, Barbara. Yes, um, this is really kind of a follow up to, to your last question, Andy. Um, the with the salaries and benefits percentage being so much under the expectation, um, and with you know appreciating uh, this, Mirna's last remark, I just wondered if we were having any trouble hiring people. Usually, these differences have to do with you know vacancies in the position. Um, I can answer that. Um, we're actually fairly well staffed. Um, there have been a few um, positions that we have struggled to hire, but for the most part, you know, compared to many other agencies and certainly compared to the county, uh, we are very close to being fully staffed. So thank you. Okay. One of the items that is, you know, we we estimate benefits and we don't want to be short on benefits. And uh, we estimate benefits during the budget pro development process, which is you know, January through through and February. Um, and CalPERS does not uh, post any information about next year's 
benefits until June. Uh, that's when they post their agenda and then they don't vote until August, I believe. So we don't see those numbers until much later. So we're doing our best to make sure that we capture, you know, what the what the historical increases are, et cetera. So if we, you know, we just want to make sure that we have covered there. So but in terms of vacancies, like the director said, uh, we're pretty pretty good at um, filling our vacancies in terms of posting and filling our vacancies. So it's really, I think, more on the benefits side. Good. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, concerns relating to the summary report? All right. Seeing none, next uh, report is the cash balance summary. Uh, again, we'll handle this on an exception basis. Any questions, comments? Yes, Barbara. Sorry, my question about this, I saw this before on an earlier report, I didn't ask about it, and that's under the bequest balances, the $848,000 for Northwest. I, I'm i not remembering the details to that. I wondered if you could let us know. It's a really significant uh, bequest. Where did that came from? Um, you know, I, I don't really know the answer to that question. I, I It's been there as long as I've been here and probably before. Um, we haven't really been able to identify a good use for those funds, but we think with the, if we can get that grant funding from the state, that that would be one of the ways that we would uh, use this funding. It doesn't have restrictions on it. So if we want to use it for capital, we can do that. that that's great. And just maybe someday, if you could let us know where that came from, it's just a, such a large bequest. To Sure. Almost a million dollars. Thank you. Well, it, it clearly didn't come any time since July of last year. <laughs> uh, so we'll have to research it further. Other other questions or concerns about the cash balance summary? Uh, Mirna, it looks like this is just reflecting our normal uh, receipt of tax revenues. I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the balances uh, Basically, the property tax balance goes down till December. Then we've got a uh, significant increase, and then it's going down uh, slightly. We expect we'll get a significant increase in April. The uh, sales tax, it's been declining slightly, but basically flat uh, within 5% over the year. Yeah, okay. All right, we're going to move on then to... Uh, Transactions over $50,000. Questions on this one? Seeing none? Okay. Other contract services. I know this is a quarterly report you prepare for us. I appreciate it. Any questions on this? I did have one question, um, which is kind of a follow up to Barbara's. Uh, I, I noticed, and, and I don't know, Susan, I realize Suzanne's not in the meeting and you may not have this information, but I noticed that year to date, we've spent about $50,000 on background checks. Um, that to me is a good sign. It means we're, we're hiring people. I was just curious, any sense of what a background check costs per applicant? That's a great question. And uh, I can find out for you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just, I just be curious. I think this is the first time that this has uh, kind of jumped out uh, at me, but I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that we're hiring and that I'm glad that we're fully staffed or close to it. Okay. Any other questions on this report? All right. Then we're going to move on to the uh, fund balance reports and the uh, property tax statement of special fund activity. Questions? I have a question. And maybe this is not the right form, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it anyway. 
I'm looking at the ending fund balance down at the bottom for categories like IT resource replacement, capital replacement, et cetera. And I know that in the budget for the coming fiscal year, Marina, you did request that we increase the uh, fund for rate stabilization. Um, should we also consider replenishing some of these other funds? What will be, yes, you but Oh. Um, yes, I think that is a uh, very good question. Uh, maybe that's something that I could add to our workflow for next fiscal year. Um, what would be nice to see is at that time, I say, you know, maybe September will have all of all of the sales tax revenues right recorded in in August and we'll see if there's any surplus but whether there's a surplus or not I think that it would benefit um we would benefit from a discussion on replenishing these funds and um so we did talk about that at the budget workshop as looking at a policy for replenishing and um, I think that it would be appropriate September. Okay, that's great. Lisa, can I ask you to please make a note that let's let's plan to revisit this in, in September. It just feels like a prudent thing to to do if we're uh, if we're increasing the stabilization fund. I think we should also be looking at these other funds and and allocating some some money appropriately. Some additional funding. So what is in here are for example, let's say um we're looking at, we the commission approved the let's say Windsor right it approved the Windsor capital project the little mini refresh that and it's a capital project so we will reserve the total costs of that project and and if we're only spending half of it we will allocate half of it but the other 50 percent would be in this reserve so that's what we are doing project by project, but additional rep, uh, above and beyond that is the conversation I'd like to have. Okay, good, thank you. Anything else on uh, fund balance? Okay. Then uh, we're looking at the uh, allocation report, which you mentioned earlier I have uh, I have a question although I think I'm answering it myself mm -hmm. um, normally we would expect expenses to be 60 40 in uh salaries and employee benefits but what you're saying here i believe is that we're allocating sunday hours 100 percent to sales tax and so the result is that overall sales tax will account for more than 40 percent and property tax will account for less than 60 percent is that right yes okay um and then the benefits what's the timing for the year-end allocation of benefits is that something that happens between the june 30 close of the fiscal year and the final statements um generally generally we start working on basically what we do for year end. We start even in April where we're analyzing all of our general ledger accounts and looking for any items that we may need to, uh, lack for a better word, clean up and, um, or, you know, an allocation, like in this case, we're still working toward that the new system of allocating benefits across all divisions and not just lumping it into HR. Oh, right. So yeah. that is where this is coming from. Um, and so we're we're still um, 
working toward that. I think that I've already had discussions with staff. So I this item sh should be done. Our the goal is to get it done within the month of April. So by the by our June report, we should you know, we'll just continue to keep working and it should, but this allocation of benefits, the goal is to get it done within the month of April. Well, that's, that's great. I'm really glad to hear that. And I, and I really appreciate, I know there's extra work involved, but I think it really makes sense to allocate it by division and not against HR's budget. Yeah. Thanks. Any other question on this? Okay. Then we've got, Two reports remaining, the uh, property tax, uh, budget to actual detail, and the sales tax. We'll start with the property tax. Any questions, comments, concerns on any anything related to the property tax details? Okay. And how about this, the uh, the sales tax details? Any questions, comments, concerns on those? Okay, well, thank you, uh, Lerna. Thanks to you and your team. Really appreciate the, the great work and the financial control you brought. And I I'm, I'm I'm looking around, sensing a great deal of confidence on the part of the finance committee that we're in a sound sound position. Okay, we're going to move on to our our next uh, agenda item, which is the economic impact study. So, Ray, I'm going to I'm going to turn this over to you. Thank you, Ray. <clears throat> before we um, continue, I just wanted to ask Mirna, did you want me to display these spreadsheets here? That okay. No, no more. You could take that down. Okay. Lisa, if you could go to the slides for this. So uh, thank you, uh, committee chair Elkin and committee members. Ray Hawley, I wanted to talk to you about this study. Um, I want to start by talking a little bit about Dr. Robert Eiler. He's been a economics professor at Sinema State for almost 30 years. Uh, he's a very well-known uh, economist, speaker, uh, regionally and occasionally nationally known. He keynotes the economic uh, impact and development conferences that Sonoma State puts on every year. And he also um, works on studies like this. So we contacted him uh, earlier in the fiscal year, and uh, I had rounded up a series of economic impact studies that I found, uh, you know, th talking to, I think I might've gotten one from Commissioner Doyle. Uh, we found some others online, uh, said, hey, can you do something like this that would uh, have an, you know, study the impact of the Sonoma County Library on the local economy? Uh, he was interested in doing that. So we, uh, we got an agreement going. Uh, he went through multiple examples of economic impact studies. He used um, Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, all the usual things that economists put in reports. And then he he has such a unique insight into the local economy that he worked on those as well. Staff plans to use the very positive uh, results of this to educate people about the value of the library system. Uh, we're certainly going to be very happy to hand this study to a campaign committee if it does form, if the commission makes that choice. And I wanted to just go through a couple of things with you. It's it's uh, it's not in the slideshow, but I want I want to say very frankly that having Dr. Eiler's name on this is a stamp of approval uh, with local cities, local governments, with the media. Uh, this is going to help us out a lot. Um, he used budget figures from fiscal year 21, 22, and 22, 23. There's one thing that I want to call your attention to. He, um, he looked at the capital expenditures for those two years, and he averaged them. And he and I had a little bit of a debate about that. He insisted that he wanted to have capital in the report because it does create a significant impact. But we know that capital expenditures vary widely 
from fiscal year to fiscal year. So this is a two-year snapshot. Uh, the rest of it is more of a, a useful long-term trend, but these, these are a two-year snapshot. If you could go to the next slide, Lisa. Uh, I think there's, was there, okay, sorry, I have my mind order. Uh, there is a multiplier effect, as we know, on any kind of spending. Um, the Sonoma County Library spending more than doubles its initial impact. It's about $2.41 in direct return on investment. Then that, when I say investment, I mean the investment of the taxpayers, property tax and sales tax. When we add the value of the collection, that rises to $3.00. And 82 cents. So it's a 382% return on investment. Uh, we create jobs and business revenues. We create local tax revenue. I uh, checked in with Commissioner Cahill earlier. He pointed out that um, because people are not spending money on things that they get for free at the library, they go spend them elsewhere. Uh, that's kind of buried in the report. Um, I will say that Dr. Eiler is a wonderful economist. He's not an English major. Um, we found a couple of typos in here that we're going to fix before it goes to the commission. If anybody's found any else, any others, please send them to me. And we did have some interest. He and I had some interesting discussions about his writing style, but it's his consultant work product. And, you know, we're not going to push too hard on that. I will say that um, he found, I didn't, I'd never heard this number before, but he found that the state average cost per visit to a library is $12. In Sonoma County, it's $9.74. So we're a better deal. If you could go to the next slide, Lisa. This is uh, just to kind of loop back a little bit. Uh, he, uh, Dr. Eiler uh, measured economic impacts in three categories our operations, our capital improvements, and then the social benefits and household savings. Uh, I thought he lowballed this, frankly. Uh, I believe the figure was $30 a month. Uh, there's probably many multiples of that for certain families, but it probably also accounts for some families who don't use it at all. Um, so he's not gonna come out and say it, but I'm gonna say it. Uh, just to circle back to what I said before, by offering free library services, we free up discretionary spending for households and families. And not only do we help them have healthier and, and more prosperous lives, but we help the community that way as well. And that, uh, if you could go to one more slide, Lisa. This is a direct quote um, from Dr. Eiler. And uh, believe you me, everybody is going to see this quote everywhere uh, this year, because this is um, this really highlights, you know, the gist of the report. Uh, again, if anybody's seen anything that looks glaringly wrong, like using two dollars and forty cents instead of two forty one, uh, you know, a couple of typos like that, love to get them so we can correct them before it goes to the commission. Yeah, and then I'd like to add um, a few things. So one of the things that this report does not do, um, and it's a very difficult thing to do, is really calculate how much people save by using those. And that's because, you know, we don't assign, we can, we can, we can figure out how much it costs for us to, you know, subscribe to the New York Times, but we don't attach costs to our programming. Um, we, you know, if we compared ourselves to the Parks and Rec Department, for example, where they really do have a, a fee-based model, um, we would come out much more favorably. So that's one of the limitations of this study, and um, just want to put that ca caveat in there. Yep. Love to hear any questions or comments. Okay. Where did Yara, did you... Oh, sorry. Yeah. Where did the numbers derive from? Like, how did he do the math for this? Well, the budget numbers came from our published budget. Okay. And Mirna reviewed them and clarified them. Okay. And then he did his own economics uh, calculations. Uh, you know, there's a, he looked at household income. He looked at numbers of households, likely library users, things like that. Okay. 
but the budget numbers came from us. Okay. Barbara? Yes, um, I just wanted to compliment your great idea, Ray. I, uh, you know, I agree with you that, you know, Dr. Eiler is, you know, basically, you know, renowned figure and very, one of the people that you trust with information. And so I think, you know, locally this is, um, you know, will have a great, uh, you know, positive impact. So I think it's a wonderful study that was done. I had one major, I don't know what it is, just a question whether you had, had a conversation with them about it. Uh, the fact that the Sonoma County Library has a lower per visit cost than the state average, I wonder if that has anything to do with the fact that the facilities are owned by the jurisdictions rather than, you know, I don't know what the facilities cost other libraries, but, you know, if they own the facilities, they might have more cost involved. Some of that's, and I think that you might want to, or we might collectively want to think about that because I think the jurisdictions might ask that question. Uh, thank you, Commissioner McKenzie. I have no idea how to answer that, but I know who to ask. And I will do that right away. I might be able to shed some light. So some of it is based on that per capita. And, um, and when you have a large library system, um, you can spread the cost out over a larger number of people. Whereas when you have like a small city library, um, you have much more overhead and so your per capita costs are gonna be higher. Um, that's one of the things, but there, there's probably many other factors involved and the question about the buildings is, is a good one. Good, good question, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Barbara. Deborah. I just want to say that the, that the similar report that the Friends of San Francisco commissioned and paid for um, was in preparation for uh, a major campaign to fix all the branches in San Francisco. And it was very, very useful. Um, even there was an overview that was just a one pager that was incredibly useful. And then the whole the whole thing was very, we found it to be very useful as we, as we led a convenient? successful campaign. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, glad, glad to hear that. Uh, any, any other uh, Comments, questions for Ray? So we'll comb through this again uh, with a fine tooth comb. We'll, we'll address Commissioner McKenzie's question and I believe it's gonna be on the commission agenda on May 1st, uh, again, as an informational item, but because it's, it doesn't affect library expenditures, you know, but because it's, you know, so much tied to the economic issue that we wanted to preview it with the finance committee. So thank you. We really appreciate that, Ray. If uh, if anybody does find a typo or small, and I understand we're not at the rewrite stage, we're at the typo correction stage. But right. When would you want those comments to uh, be sent? Well, we have to start submitting things to the... Uh, to the portal in the next few days, actually. So, right? Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we could probably yeah. squeak it till Monday. I just want to yeah. emphasize this is a really big deal. I think it'd be very useful. I'm glad to see it. Good. Thank you. Great. I think Commissioner McKenzie has her hand up. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you, Barbara. Please. I never get my mute button to unmute. Um, anyway, I thought maybe we were going to go through the report uh, in this meeting, which is fine that we're not. But I just had one uh, one question. I thought um, on page 34 of our agenda, page five, I guess, of this report, it talks about community resilience and disaster planning and the roles that library plays. And I, I know we've I've talked to Director Thibault about this a couple of times. I'm not sure where we are with that. But I again, I would have probably an answer prepared for the jurisdictions uh, related to that. Um, I know we're working on it, but I'm not sure where we are. Well, I'm sorry, what's what's the, uh, an, an answer related to what question or concern? Well, I think I'm, she's referring to um, the idea of the library as a resilience or cooling or heating center. Yeah. Yes, and uh, just un for unforeseen natural disasters, wildfires, all the stuff that we've gone through here that we can provide a comfortable environment and, you know, safe space to be and all that. And, you know, we, we are when we're open, but we, you know, haven't been open, you know, beyond our normal hours. And, um, you know, there's really two parts of the disaster planning. That's one, you know, keeping 
our staff safe, but there's also just the community aspect. And I think that that is a strong point made in this report, but I don't think we've quite, um, at least publicly addressed our role in the community, uh, you know, safe space in a disaster, you know, the answer to that, how, what role we're gonna play. Sorry, long-winded, but I think you know what I mean. Uh, okay, I see, I see heads nodding. So I think this is this is uh, clearly not something we're going to be able to address in this report, but it is uh, part of the larger discussion we want to have with our uh, JPA partners and uh, our community partners as as well. Dave, yes, I'm glad Barbara mentioned this paragraph because I found the typo I noticed earlier. <laughs> it's a uh, community resilience. Line three, you have T-R-H-E instead of T-H-E. Thank you. I was glad to move the process along. <laughs> there it is. You know, we have a very uh, eagle-eyed finance committee. Not, not only are we skilled at parsing numbers on Excel's, but we can proofread as well. And I, I, I'm so grateful to everybody for uh, close attention. Any other comments, uh, suggestions for Ray on the report? Well, I was just gonna say, talking about the cost per visit. So one of the things that we have seen is that our cost per visit is probably going to be going down because every year we are increasing the number of people who come to our libraries. So when you look at the chart on page 37, you can see you know, that our visits are going up and this year we're slated to uh, increase 10% over last year. So think about that too, when we look at that cost per visit. Yeah, we've got, uh, as you were saying, we've got fixed costs to keep the library open. Our Staffing costs are increasing gradually over the year, but if we can get more people to come to our branches, then the cost per visit will continue to decrease, and that's great. We're a good deal. We are a good deal, and I think that's, uh, yeah. Deborah. It might, it might be useful when you present it to the commission um, to say why you contacted Eiler. Just, just give the commission a, just a, a hint about um, why we wanted the larger picture. Okay. So, so, was similar to what Ray did today, or are you looking for more? I'm just uh, because the the commissioners are going to see their packet, and they're not going to hear anybody do the introduction before they read through the documents. So mm -hmm. it would be nice for just a sentence that said something along In the, the line. agenda. Item. In the agenda item report. Sorry. Exactly. Okay. Sorry. Didn't mean didn't mean to be unclear. Thank you. But just overviews are always helpful. Even if they're only a sentence. Okay. Anything else? All right. Well, Ray, thanks so much for bringing that to us. Appreciate the uh, chance to see it before it goes to the full commission. So we're down to item five, uh, agenda items for future committee meetings. Any suggestions? Barbara. Um, I We're going to do the um, CIP next month, right? That was on the, we talked about that earlier, yeah. And then um, I was wondering about, um, Director Thibault mentioned something that I thought was a fabulous idea. I think she and, and uh, CFO had talked about creating a formula for, you know, if we have a surplus at the end, uh, operating surplus at the end of a given year, having a formula um, for how to, uh, where to spread that. We, it, it, to me, that would really wrap up the, that's the policy that we need that we're missing. We've got all these other great policies in place for allocating our funds. I just wanted to ask them if it was too early to talk about that or if they had something preliminary they wanted to bring before us at some point in time. Before before I allow somebody to answer, could you repeat again what the formula was for? I didn't catch it. At the end of it in a year, if we have what we, you know, the technical term is surplus, right, which we aren't really using that term, but if we have surplus and the operating budget 
allocating that to something uh, beyond just uncommitted fund balance, but have a formula that would include so much goes to to the um, our you know liability unfunded liabilities. So much of it goes to capital accounts, and so much. Am I misinterpreting what you said, Director Tabot? Nope, that's correct. Yeah. So Mirren and I have been talking about coming up with a policy that would um, direct, you know, how we spend surplus funds. I think it's along the same lines yeah. that you had mentioned during the budget workshop and today. So. Right. So, so it seems like it's it's related to the topic that we're moving to September. And I think it's also going to be related to uh, if and when we can assure a renewal of the sales tax. Right. Yeah. But that, that's a great point, Barbara. Thank you. And we will be sure to include that. Uh, anything else that you'd like to uh, have us cover? Okay. Well, our next meeting will be uh, Monday, May 20th, here at 3 o'clock. And with that, we are adjourned at 351. Thank you all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Thanks, everybody. April is the Yeah. April is the sunshine. I think so. I think so. Thank you.